Hello, and welcome back to Space or Laces. I'm your host, Jeff Meyer, and I'm very excited to be back and talk a little football. The 2018 football season is upon us and is starting off this weekend with a little college football. And the biggest game of this weekend is Washington versus Auburn, number six versus number nine, playing in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. This game is the perfect way to kick off the 2018 football season. I'm very excited to watch it. And there's a few other games I'd like to mention that I'm excited for this weekend. Another game is Tennessee versus WVU. That's a neutral site as well. Albany at Pitt. Michigan, number 14 in the country, at number 12, Notre Dame. And then Appalachian State versus Penn State. Now, <clears throat> the only reason I'm uh, excited about the Penn State games, I'm a big Penn State hater, is the first time I'm going to get to see Penn State play this year. And next weekend, uh, September 8th, Penn State has to go to Pitt and play in uh, a very anticipated game for me, and it's a night game. So I've been wanting a uh, Pitt-Penn State game to be a night game, primetime game since the, seri- the series came back alive two years ago when uh, Penn State came to Pitt in the year uh, 2016, I believe. It was the fall of 2016. But I'm very excited to see what Penn State has to offer this weekend in anticipation of the Pitt-Penn State game. Because... Um, with this upcoming season, there's a lot of expectations for Pitt. Pat Narduzzi, he's got, to, he's got to produce now. He's been there for four or five years at this point, and if they don't start winning now, I think his, his reign is over at Pitt. Um, they've been very me- mediocre the last couple of years. I know two years ago they beat Penn State when Penn State came to uh, Pittsburgh. And also, Pitt has knocked off a couple uh, very highly ranked opponents over the last couple of years. One was Clemson a few years ago at Death Valley. They were number one in the nation. So Pitt has some uh, quality wins under its belt for the last couple of years. But the problem is when push comes to shove, they can't win all year. Their last couple of seasons, they've been a, what, six to eight win team. And that's not going to cut it, uh, especially for a prestigious university like the University of Pittsburgh. They have so much history. And for them to be a mediocre six, seven, eight win team, I don't even know, five wins. I can't even remember the last couple of years, but they've been pretty bad. This is the year where Pat Narduzzi has to turn around. And the best way to turn around is this weekend when Albany comes to town, come out, play well, you know, get ready for Pitt Penn State. Because if you can win this weekend and then Penn State comes to town, Penn State is ranked number 10 in the country right now. So the second week of the year could be a huge matchup for Pitt starting off the season. If they can knock off number 10 Penn State at home second week of the season, it's going to say a lot for uh, the Pitt coaching staff and the players they have. Because I don't really know how talented they are. I'm very excited to see this weekend what kind of talent they do have. But it's a very, very highly anticipated matchup second week of the season for me. I'm very excited uh, to see both teams play. And then talking about the Michigan game, like speaking about Pat Narduzzi and uh, expecting him to win now kind of thing, because he hasn't really produced over the last couple of years. Michigan, with Jim Harbaugh, has not produced like they should. A lot of people have expected much more out of Michigan and out of Jim Harbaugh, and it, quite frankly, has not happened yet. I like Jim Harbaugh. I'm a huge fan. Michigan's one of my favorite teams, but they need to start producing, especially this year with the Ohio State um, scandal slash controversy that started off this 2018 college football season. This is Michigan's year to strike. They need to make an imp- like they need a, 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 a essentially a splash year in the Big Ten. This is their year, and they're going to start off Week One with a tough opponent, number twelve Notre Dame. So right out of the gate, they're going to be tested. And then throughout the year, you know, they play Ohio State, they play Penn State, they play their you know their very very rough, rough and rigorous Big Ten uh, schedule. So if you can get a road win week one versus a top 15 opponent, that's setting your season off in the right direction. This is a big game for them right out of the gate. And talking about big games too, for West Virginia, a lot of people have them ranked very highly this year. Um, preseason, they're ranked number 17. I think they could have won a little higher. They got Mac Greer back, their quarterback. He's back. Their offense was tough last year until Greer got hurt. They were playing well, and I think they could do a lot of things this year in the Big 12. So they have a neutral site game, uh, neutral game, the start of the season against Tennessee, SEC opponent. 
I don't know how much Tennessee's got this year. They're unranked coming into the game, but it should be fun to watch regardless. And this is a big year for W, the head coach. A lot of people uh, wanted his head after last season. They thought W underperformed. But I'm excited to see how um, how they start off this season. Now, just uh, talking at some other college football things, uh, a couple of my friends, some of the people part of Southbound Sports, we are actually going to Georgia this year to watch Auburn play at Georgia. So that's why I'm very, very excited with this huge matchup with Washington and Auburn. If Washington, or excuse me, if Auburn can take advantage and take care of business against Washington and play tough throughout the season, that matchup, which I believe is November 10th, we got tickets for, that could be one hell of a game. Could decide the SEC. If both teams play well, I didn't look quite at their schedules yet. I don't know if or when they play uh, George, or excuse me, Alabama, um, which I'm expect, uh, expecting both to play Alabama probably at one point. But if they can both teams take care of uh, business, that game on November 10th could be the SEC game of the year. And I'm hoping, I am hoping and praying that game gets flexed to a primetime game. That's one thing that I've really never been at as a college uh, night primetime game. Other than uh, the year I walked on, we, uh, 2011 Pitt, when I was there, we had South Florida on a Thursday night uh, night game at Pitt, and it was on ESPN. It was a fun game, but uh, as, a, as an actual fan, I've never been to a primetime game, college game that is. I've been to a couple NFL ones, Steeler games, uh, things like that, but college... So that's why I'm really excited for the season because Pitt, Penn State, it's a night game, should be a primetime game. I hope Pitt takes care of business against Penn State. But then, um, looking at the college football season, some of the games I'm going to, I'm trying to go to the Michigan-Penn State game. And that game right there, talking about Michigan coming out of the gate against Notre Dame, both teams start taking care of business throughout the season. That Michigan-Penn State game at the big house, could be another primetime game. So just looking at the football schedule, I mean, there's a lot of what ifs, matchup, you know, different matchups, things like that. But um, looking at the teams and some of the games that we're attending this year, I'm attending be some either one to three primetime games that uh, determine the SEC and the Big Ten. So I'm really excited for this college football season. We got a lot of games, different things on the docket, but it should be a lot of fun. Just want to talk briefly about the NFL. I mean, starts uh, September 6th, I believe. It's Thursday night, next Thursday night. And that's going to be the Falcons at the Eagles. I'm really excited for the start of the NFL fo- uh, football season, just like college. But I'm not really excited for uh, Philadelphia this year. Coming off their Super Bowl win here last February, I don't think I don't see them. You know, it happening again, them going back-to-back or anything like that. I think the Falcons are gonna go are going to go into Philadelphia next Thursday and handle the Eagles. And people are gonna be freaking out, you know, the knee jerk reaction, all those kind of things that you love to see week one, week two of the NFL season. People are gonna be like, oh, the Eagles are garbage, blah, blah, blah. I think the Eagles will be fine this year, but they're just not gonna repeat. It's not gonna happen. They will not do it. And I think Matt Ryan and the Falcons have a lot to prove after last year, especially that matchup in the playoffs last year. When the Falcons, I thought, should have beat the Eagles. And that last play, it was like the fourth down. I can't rem- uh, remember the exact situation. Late in the game, fourth down. When Julio Jones was on like the backside of the end zone. Looked like he was getting held. He fell down, got up. Matt Ryan threw a catchable ball. And it just didn't happen. Just went through his hands. Honestly, if you would have caught it, he wouldn't have been in bounds anyway. But they were that close. A few inches away from beating the Eagles. And maybe winning the Super Bowl, maybe going back to back Super Bowls. Who knows? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of crazy things that happened in the playoffs last year to allow the Eagles to go and win the Super Bowl. But that Falcons game was tough. And anytime you play Matt Ryan in the Falcons, it's going to be a tough game. So I'm excited for next weekend or next Thursday and next weekend. Should be fun. I think it's going to be a good game to start the season off. And I think the Falcons and Matt Ryan are going to prevail in that first game next Thursday to start off the NFL season. And then just quickly, talking about my Pittsburgh Steelers, they're playing at Cleveland to open up the season, the 2018 season. And that's one thing I'm very afraid of this year. 
I swear this off season, I've cared and looked more at the Cleveland Browns than I have the Steelers or any other team in the NFL. And I'm honestly ashamed of that. <laughs> I'm ashamed. I've been so interested in the Cleveland Browns, but honestly, they have a talented team now. They're no joke. And depending how coaching and their quarterback play goes, they could have a big year. They could have a very big year. They have a lot of talent, a lot of talent. And I don't know exactly what's going on with Des Bryant. He's still a free agent. There's a lot of speculation. He turned down Cleveland, whatever. But if he would have went to Cleveland, I was just thinking about this. You have Jar- was it Jarvis Landry, Josh Gordon, who's finally reinstated, going to play this year. And if you had Des Bryant, that's the best receiving core in the NFL, those three. I don't know how that mesh would be the worst locker room probably ever, especially the, the worst uh, receiver film room uh, you know, of all time. But that would be a hell of a receiving core. Very talented, very athletic, very good receivers. But I'm just – I don't know I don't know what to think about that first game with Cleveland. They have so much talent. They've had so many high draft picks over the last couple of years. Some have busted. You know, they, they've whiffed on some quarterbacks like usual. But they have a talented roster, and I think – I think this year they might turn around. So I'm I like usually for the Steelers, like, oh, we're playing Cleveland. That's two wins this year. Got two divisional games against Cleveland. That's two wins. Thank God Cleveland's in our division. But it's not that way anymore. It's not that way. I think Cleveland can make some noise in the AFC North this year. And I'm hoping they just don't make it against the Steelers. But we'll see. Time will tell. It always does. That's what you love about football. Those big matchups, those rivalry games, they're so much fun. And, I mean, Cleveland really hasn't been a rivalry for the Steelers for a lot of years, especially when the Steelers usually beat them twice a year, like I just uh, talked about. But a whole new year. There's a lot of talent in Cleveland. But I'm also, it's just, at the end of the day, um, for a lot of these NFL teams, their seasons just come down to quarterback play. And they just drafted um, Baker Mayfield, which I was a huge fan of him in college, but there's too much comparison uh, similarities to uh, Johnny Menzel, Johnny Menzel, and I don't know. We're gonna find out. I don't know if he's gonna be an NFL quarterback or not, but I think I'm pretty sure. The last I looked, Tyrod Taylor is gonna be starting for the Cleveland Browns. He's not a bad quarterback, and if they can run the ball, get first downs, they might give the Steelers a little trouble at Week One. I think the Steelers are still gonna win, but it's definitely on the NFL. Um, for next weekend of possible upsets, I'd have to put the Steelers on upset alert next weekend. First week of the season against the Cleveland Browns. I'd hate I'd hate to see him do it, but they have to be on upset alert. They're so, the Browns are so talented, but we'll see. And the final thing I'm going to talk about today concerning the NFL, college football, is the whole tackling debacle. I didn't get to watch many preseason games because of my work schedule. And honestly, I, don't, I frankly don't care that much. Preseason football doesn't, it's never really been a big draw for me. But I saw clips, things on Twitter, highlights. It's going to be rough watching the NFL this year. It is going to be rough. I don't know how to, I don't even know how to feel about it, honestly. Because the way I grew up playing football, this isn't football compared to what we used to play and how we used to play. Um, it's probably better overall for health and safety but man it's not like it's soft it's very soft and it's still a tackle i don't know it's it's hard to really talk about it's just watching some of these plays that are now 15 yard penalties there's one clip of the guy driving the quarterback into the ground it was unnecessary roughness or whatever it's garbage man you guys got pads on helmets let them play it's gonna be rough this season i know it's gonna happen it's gonna be a big game it's going to be like a third and 15. Quarterback's going to drop back. He's going to see a receiver open across the middle. He's going to, th- he's going to um, throw it to him. Safety's going to come down. It's going to crack him right in the chest. But guess what? He led with his helmet. That's a first down. That's a 15-yard penalty. Instead of the drive being over and the team losing the game, they're magically going to get a first down, drive down the field, and win. It's going to happen. And I just hope it doesn't happen to the Steelers. It's going to be hard to watch, especially those big games, those crunch times, third downs, fourth downs. You guys got guys flying around 100 miles per hour trying to make plays, and someone's going to leave with the head. It's going to happen. They're going to hit them high. They're going to leave with the head. They're going to hit a defenseless receiver. It's going to be hard to watch. And that's one thing that's like has evolved in 
over the last couple of years, the whole defensive receiver thing. And it seems with the new rule, it's also protecting and helping the running backs finally. Because it was crazy to me in recent years, you have these receivers that anything happens and they're touched in the wrong way, whatever. There's 15 yard penalty. And then you see these running backs just getting slaughtered, slaughtered, coming through the hole, getting drilled. But now with the new rules, and even even as a running back, though, the way the rules written, and I have to look in a little closer and you know watch some more gameplay this upcoming season. But technically, if a running back lowers his head, shouldn't that be a penalty too? The way the rules written, I don't know. I'll have to look into it a little uh, a little more uh, more closely. Haven't really looked into it that much, but it's going to be crazy, especially if you're running back. And if, if that is a penalty, I don't know how you're going to run between the tackles. Honestly, don't know how it's going to even be possible, but we're going to find out shortly. The 2018 football season is upon us. I'm excited. Excited for college football. Excited for the NFL. I'm excited for Spaces Laces being back. Um, quit a little early last year. Did the Super Bowl preview, but then because of work reasons, didn't get to do a Super Bowl recap. And then a couple of weeks went by. Life goes on. I'm like, I'll just wait to the 2018 football season next, you know, next fall to start it back off. But I'm excited. I'm excited for Southbound Sports. Face the laces. I'm excited for the big show, the Southbound Sports Show. It's gonna be a fun year. I know the guys have been going all year. Talking baseball, hockey, um, the upcoming football season, of course, basketball. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed listening to them, and we're all excited for this upcoming football season and a lot of the games we're gonna attend. I'm pretty much going to be at every Steeler home game except for the Thursday night Panther game um, and a couple college football games. I'm going to try to see WVU at home. I'm going to see Pitt at home. Going down to Georgia. Road trip going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try to go to the big house. So Got a lot of different venues we're going to try to visit. I'm going to take some pictures, some videos. I'm going to really try to utilize Periscope this year more. I did last year at the, the Pitt-Penn State game at Beaver Stadium, but... Um, because of how poor the cell phone service was in the game, I didn't get really get to cover it like I wanted to. But hopefully this year, I'm going to cover some venues, some tailgating, some different things a little better, a little closer. So we're really excited for this upcoming football season, and uh, let's have some fun. All right, well, this is Jeff Meyer here on Spaces and Laces. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Southbound Sports Show, um, Southbound Sports in general. It's great getting back on the mic today. Let's have a fun year.